another AMA, another giveaway of Sins of Shadow. We're giving away a whitelist spot and $100 to one lucky winner. Just comment down below uh, about what your favorite aspect of this new project is from Brandon. Like he talks a lot about the utility. He talks a lot about what's coming up. Give me your favorite thing about this and he's going to pick one lucky winner and we're going to just pick one and you're going to get $100 in the native token and you're going to get a whitelist spot for these amazing NFTs. Anyways, thanks so much for watching this AMA and let's just keep on going. Tell me a little bit about the game and the VR and all that. Easiest thing to say is that Sins of Shadow is a four-part ecosystem. And the best way to describe it is phase one, two, three, and four. Phase one is this original OG 7,777, you know, NFT mint profile picture mint, similar to Board Ape Yacht Club, but it's our, you know, NFT IP. Then from there, phase two is the digital twins. You can upgrade those into 3D digital twins that can go in the game and all sorts of other stuff. Phase three is the game itself. So it's a play-to-earn Counter-Strike Grand Theft Auto mashup that we've got some great people behind and a lot of fun stuff going on there. And from there, you can play the characters. You can own the characters also in the game and all sorts of fun stuff, get rewarded for having these characters. And then the last thing, Sage 4, is a VR television show. So our experience with Unreal Engine, as well as other real-time VFX platforms, allows us to create a real-time TV show through animation in about a month. And you know, really fast amount of time. So we're doing that with all these characters and NFTs. So if you own an NFT, you can control the plot of the episode. What's going on, cowboy? In this video, we've got a new NFT project going on called Sins of Shadow, brought to you by Sombra. And we have the founder behind, the mind behind all of this. His name is Brandon. We're going to put him in the hot seat and grueling him up for questions, trying to figure out, hey, is this project something that we could get into? Is this something that we could look forward to a bright future? Or is this a dud? You need to make that decision. And here is the best source of information, of research that I could possibly ask for anyone. It's just to ask the founder directly the, from the horse's mouth into our beautiful ears. We need to figure out if this project is for us. Look, before we get too far, into this video, I, I, I should let you know that these are the this is a win 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 strategy. Okay, the reason why I do AMAs is because I go into YouTube and all these shillers, these YouTubers, they get paid to, to just talk about any crypto project and they all say that they're excited about it. Look, I don't care about like it, it, the information doesn't pass through a YouTuber properly and neither does a website. I think the best way to get it is from straight from the founder. So there's a three win 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 process here. One, the developer, the founder, they get to talk about their project with like excitement and insight. Two, I get compensated and I get to ask any question I want. And three, you and I get the best source of information about how to develop or how to talk about different projects. If you're new to this channel, my name is Aaron. This is just what I do here. I'm just a lizard brain cowboy trying to find my night, wait to my next Bitcoin. And so in this video, we've got Brandon, one of the founders, the minds behind Sombra and Sins of Shadow. Brandon, welcome to the hot seat. Thank you so much. Super awesome to be here. I appreciate it. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's beautiful, but you're even more beautiful. And we're talking about a beautiful project Thank called you. Sins of Shadow. But before we even get to that, Brandon, I want to know just a little bit about your background. What's yeah. your origin story coming into crypto and then into this project? Yeah, sure. Sounds good. So my origin in crypto is I you know, became a trader in 2015, just started, as you know, most people do, buying and selling on Coinbase and other places jumping in MetaMask with friends. I didn't know what it was, but it seemed cool. Uh, lost some money, made some money, you know, whatever, learned some things. And then uh, through the years of NFTs kind of coming up and rising, you know, I, I followed the technology because I also own a visual effects company and I'm a visual effects artist by trade. Uh, so myself and my company always was very interested in blockchain. And when NFTs became a big thing, we were like, hey, DFX, NFTs, blockchain, it's all coming together. Metaverse, let's do it. So, so it you, just seems like it made sense. Yeah, you had a good big background in visual effects and then you started ta tapping into crypto and then you married the two into different projects. And so what? tell me what the relationship is between you and Sombra and Sombra and Sins of Shadow here. What is Sombra? And then we could get into Sins of Shadow. Sure. So Sombra is the basically metaverse visual effects studio on blockchain. It is the Web3 division of you know my pre-existing visual effects company. And they also are the owners and creators of some sense of shadow, you know, the community behind Sombra is very involved in creating it as well as we are. So sort of a joint effort, I guess we like to call it. Awesome. So there's already a pre-existing community entering into this NFT drop called Sins of Shadow. So now tell me about what the heck is Sins of Shadow. I'm checking out the website. There's a lot of visual effects here. Tell me what I'm looking at, what's going on. 
So Sense of Shadow is the brainchild of, like I said, Sombra and the, the team behind it. And it is a 7,777 Genesis PFP NFT mint that lives on Ethereum uh, that then connects as a passport, a key, if you will, into our larger NFT ecosystem and sort of multi-chain uh, cinematic universe is what we like to call it. Okay. So, so the, it's an NFT that acts like a key to a, a metaverse or a universe or, or like a palette of different utilities? Yeah. So basically the idea, you know, we don't really call it a key. We call it more of a passport, but like when okay. you own the PFP, you can then participate in the greater ecosystem in the sense that each PFP comes with a 3D digital twin that is fully mocap uh, able as well as game able and fully uh, able to be compatible in our VR television show. So once you buy that PFP, you can then upgrade that PFP for a digital twin that has all these capabilities and things that you can do with it. And then that's yeah. just sort of like the beginning of it. And then, you know, what I mean, though, is that like, you know, you got to you got to enter into phase one to get into phase two. Got it. So I'm a lizard brain. OK, I, you got to simplify things for me. PFP stands for what again? Profile picture. Profile picture. And then so that gets upgraded into a digital twin of itself. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I upgrade that? Uh, basically, we'll announce that through our community and, you know, through our website, as well as, you know, different sources and, you know, other news outlets. Actually, also, we have now on our team for PR. And once we do that, we'll then basically allow people to come into the D app and they'll be able to buy for either a certain amount or based on, you know, if they've won or wherever their status is in terms of staking, which is something else that's part of the ecosystem, they can then basically uh buy that upgrade. And then from there, it'll enter into the game that we have, as well as other applications throughout the, the system. Okay, so great. So you said something about VR and a game. Uh, mm -hmm. This passport unlocks these things. What? Give me the broad strokes of what it unlocks. Uh, what? Tell me a little bit about the game and the VR sure. and all that. Easiest thing to say is that Sins of Shadow is a four part ecosystem. And the best way to describe it is phase one, two, three, and four. Phase one is this original OG 7,777, you know, NFT mint profile picture mint, similar to Board API Club, but it's our, you know, NFT IP. Then from there, phase two is the digital twins. You can upgrade those into 3D digital twins that can go in the game and all sorts of other stuff. Phase three is the game itself. So it's a play to earn Counter-Strike Grand Theft Auto mashup that we've got some great people behind and a lot of fun stuff going on there. And from there, you can play the characters, you can own the characters also in the game and all sorts of fun stuff, get rewarded for having these characters. And then the last thing, stage four, is a VR television show. So our experience with Unreal Engine, as well as other real-time VFX platforms, allows us to create a real-time TV show through animation in about a month. And you know, really fast amount of time. So we're doing that with all these characters and NFTs. So if you own an NFT, you can control the plot of the episode. Whoa. Okay. So there's a lot here. So let me just summarize it again for someone who's listening. Uh, there are the first, there's four phases. The first one is 7,777 mint of this profile picture, which then later you're going to release how to upgrade that into a digital twin. And that's for the 3d game, which is phase three, which is a, Counter-Strike GTA uh, game that brings in rewards, and then finally a virtual reality television show. There's a lot to unpack here. Um, I want to go to phase three here, the, the Counter-Strike GTA. How is that being developed? How What's the time frame on that? Like, uh, get, what, what are some of the rewards like? Give me some of those sure. things. Yeah, uh, great question. It's always a very popular question. Uh, yeah, so basically our team is developing the game through Unreal Engine 5, uh, taking into you know uh, full advantage of Nanite as well as Lumen, if you're familiar with those as a techie person, which basically just makes the game really efficient uh, and fast. So that's new stuff that just came out, which is really awesome. And we're you know using our team of Unreal Engine developers that we've had on staff, as well as some great new additions that we've brought in that have great experience with first-person shooters and other things. My partner, Demi and Gordon, he also is a very prolific and experienced motion capture and game technologist who is responsible for uh, tons and tons of tech and motion capture. He's been responsible for the Matrix films, uh, as well as Resident Evil, God of War, uh, you know, Spider-Man, I could go on and on. Uh, so he's really also spearheading and helping us technologi technologically uh, in terms of building some proprietary pipeline things for doing a very efficient and sort of, uh, you know, indie build for what we're doing, I suppose. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's kind of the summation of the, the team behind it. Got it. And what, what are some oh, of the, the time rewards? Frame. Yeah, time frame and the rewards. What can I get from there? So time frame, I would say, you know, we're, we just released a new roadmap for the project, which sort of, 
you know, runs through, through June, which is kind of uh, up until we're doing the final kind of staking re rewards thing through the PFP section. So we're thinking that the game is likely to, you know, launch somewhere in March of 2023. Uh, we're hoping that through, you know, a really successful NFT sale that we'll be able to accelerate that. But we're a little bit more conservative when it comes to sort of, you know, giving those timeframes because we're still in development. Obviously, we've got lots of assets developed. We've got environments developed. We've got, you know, uh, animations developed. We've got lots of characters, but you know we are also very much uh, tied to the PFPs themselves. So they have to be minted first before those characters can fully be built in 3D and then subsequently brought into the game uh, world and environment. But we are building lots of other things. Uh, so you know we anticipate you know about a year ish from now. Got it. And now, how about the rewards? It's, I'm assuming it's uh, play to earn here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a handful of different ways that you can play to earn. You know, the first and easiest is in a Counter Strike game. You, as teams, you can play, and if the team wins, the they win money. Effectively, as teams, you put up cash to play, and it's winner takes all. And when the team wins, it's MVP gets the most, and then all the way down the line, statistically based on how the team you know players do. So you're basically putting up money and then taking it if you win. If you don't want to play the game, you can also bet on the game and gamble sort of like a racetrack and sort of bet on the players as well and sort of different aspects of the game in terms of where people will even get killed. The other aspect also is in the open world GTA, you can get robbed. So if somebody kills you, they can take your money. Uh, and if they kill you, they take your money. And we've also got rangers that are the somber police. And if they take your money, the house takes it. So there's a handful of different ways. Oh, that's awesome. So it's a, it's betting in a couple of ways. You put up the money when you're playing and then you, you could bet on games depending on who plays and stuff like that. Because I'm not good, yeah. but I could I could probably right. bet on I'm, someone else. I'm right. terrible at video yeah. games. And so it's like, I like kind of making these things and like doing the art, but I'm bad at playing them. So we have like a really cool spectator mode that allows you to place bets while you're in spectator mode. And you can like change camera angles and stuff like that to see what's going on in the game. Got it. So I'm looking at the, the, the website and it's got a very like... um. Um, mechanical android type of feel. Can you talk to me about why it's called Sins of Shadow and what's some of the inspiration behind the art here? Sure, yeah. So Sins of Shadow came from the name Sombro. You know, obviously our organization is called Sombro, which means shadow in Spanish. Uh, I, you know, love Spanish culture and spent a lot of time in Spain and, you know, just have, you know, studied it as well throughout my time in school. Not that I'm necessarily an expert by any means, but I can certainly say that I'm a hobbyist and I enjoy it. Uh, and so I, you know, have loved the you know kind of word somber for a long time and it was sort of a natural thing for me sort of you know this web three world of shadows but also i think the metaphor of sombra you know being associated with the spanish bullfighting arenas being you know you know the the shady section of those arenas where the rich people sat and you know those were expensive seats versus you know the solo where it was you know a little hotter and you know less comfortable and where you know uh you know it was cheaper. So we kind of took that metaphor and said, hey, like, you know, the bullfighting arena below, which is the crypto metaphor, obviously, for, you know, the bulls and then us sitting in these, you know, very nice pricey <laughs> seats above. Now, obviously, Sombra, Sins of Shadow uh, kind of came from that, you know, uh, need to, I think, come up with our, you know, own sort of, I think, identity. And the name of the artist, uh, well, his collection, rather, that was inspired by the game, I, I found an artist and I have liked him for a long time. His name's Axel and, you know, his work inspired sort of the initial idea. And then from there we combined these different things. And so his original piece, which inspired it was called Sins. And so obviously Sombra Shadow. And so we became Sins of Shadow. Gotcha. So you started with the artist first and you, and, and you, and you, fa and you found an artist that uh, his art inspired your already, you know, inclinations towards Spanish culture and all that stuff. And then, so you mm -hmm. marry the two and so out of that came an art and from there came the game. Is that is it, pretty much? Yeah. I mean, it's, he's, he's Argentinian based. And I think that, you know, there's also a lot of things that I love about Argentinian culture. And so he uh, brought some really amazing aesthetics, I think to the art, which was something that just appealed to me in general. And his art then definitely influenced all of the characters that we've created. Uh, and so he's been, you know, a very tremendous influence behind it as well. And we have a, you know, nice showcase planned for him when we launched the project on April 21st. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing how his career unfolds as well, you know, as a pretty talented illustrator. Gotcha. And so I'm looking at this stuff. It's like Android hum humanoid type of stuff. Why not go with like dinosaurs or sharks or, you know, bears or gorillas? You know what I mean? Like why, why in particularly Androids and what's kind of the, is there like a lore or a story that's attached to this? 
Well, I think for us, we wanted to create a bit more of a human connection towards these characters. You know, obviously the characters we see in many NFT collections are, you know, animal based. And that I think has a lot to do with, you know, sort of the easier route of not having to deal with, you know, gender or race or anything like that. And so we kind of wanted it to be a much more personal, but also inclusive. And so we went to great lengths to sort of include as many possible races as we could, you know, skin tones and sort of, you know, different gender uh, inclusions as well, so that we can have people, if they want, you know, mint an NFT that has no real, you know, gender stereotype or anything like that. And so we, we just wanted to make something, like I said, that really represented our community also. And uh, we, I think as a community, really love cyberpunk, cyberpunk culture, just the way it was formed. And, you know, from there, uh, we wanted to sort of create something that we thought people were going to really, really resonate with and would be proud to have, you know, PFP, a profile picture, plus other okay. things. Gotcha. Now talk to me a little bit about the team. And then I want to get into this VR television show, right? How big is your team? Um, and yeah, uh, how, who are you working with here? Yeah, so I mean, our team, it definitely fluctuates depending on what's going on, you know, for the production, but I would say that our base is around like 11 people, you know, maybe 15 ish. Uh, so we also have, you know, my visual effects studio, which has about 20, 25 people. Uh, so our primary people are, you know, myself, you know, my, uh, who basically runs uh, some day to day on real engine stuff, but also does a lot of AMAs like this and, you know, does marketing and, you know, has conversations with different people and uh, just sort of does many different things as CEO. Uh, Demi, and like I said, is very, you know, involved in the technical pipeline, creating, you know, uh, motion capture solutions and sort of setting things up for studio stuff and getting ready for shooting and all of those types of things. Um, we have our team of Unreal Engine artists, which is about five artists specifically for that. And they're doing, you know, some of the game development. They're doing the blueprinting, uh, C++ thing, things like that. I have a very talented Solidity developer as well as a front-end React developer. Uh, they're managing sort of all of the, you know, web and Solidity contract type things that we need to have facilitated. Uh, and then I also have a new partner, which we're really excited about, named Mihal, who's a software developer, as well as a really talented VFX artist. She's got over a million downloads on her app, Puppet Master, which is a kid's learning app, which allows people to take pictures as children, you know, and then animate their toys. So, you know, that's been really popular in schools for a long time. And so now she's helping us develop some really cool applications for our avatars. And, you know, that's one of the other reasons we built them with MoCap is that we're able to sort of build in these features through, uh, you know, pre-existing technology that you know apple and google have created that allows you to track your face and all sorts of stuff that then allows you to control these you know amazing modeled avatars you know without that much trouble but obviously there's there's some trouble that we got to go through to get it set up so that's awesome uh, that, there's other people but you know i mean you can always go on our website and check it out there's a handful of staff there but rest assured that there's a fairly large pool of visual effects artists sort of technologists behind technologists awesome. behind the scenes yeah, it's awesome to hear that you have such a deep team of talented uh, artists and designers and visual effects guys. It's really, um, you, th that's really inspiring because sometimes I see like these NFT projects and they're all like, you know, this <laughs> terrible looking thing. It looks like anyone could, could have created, it, which is, I mean, more, it's, you know, art is, you know, you know, what <laughs> well, people think, you know what I mean? No, but, I mean, it is and it isn't though. At, at this point in, in the world, I think that there's so many projects that you are allowed to be a little bit uh, judgmental. It's just know. so saturated. It's crazy, man. It's like everybody and their mother's doing it. It's like my grandma calls me up and she's like, hey, I heard about NFTs. How do I do a 10K collection? I want to make a million dollars. I'm like, fuck grandma, I can't. Oh, sorry, I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> you know what? Let me ask you something. What? what do you the, the NFT market, right? Let's just zoom way out here for someone who's not into NFTs or or, or whatever. Um, what do you think are the highlights, the best parts of NFTs getting adopted, especially like you coming from a visual effects type of background? Like, what's some of the best opportunities from NFTs, and what are some of the worst ones, right? Like, I would I would say some of the worst things are people taking advantage of it and like you know, yeah. um, just putting out terrible projects. And some of the best ones are like some real use cases. So for yourself, what do you think are some of the highlights and lowlights of the NFT um, marketplace ecosystem? I think the highlight is always the community and the technology. Those two things combined. That's obviously super broad, mm. but I mean, community building is, in, is just like irreplaceable. Like the friendships that are formed and just like that escape from reality, I think that people get from these you know, sort of experiences that are coming together within you know, these community-based things. And that's sort of what I call the metaverse is, you know, a, just sort of a 
non-physical based, you know, exper- group experience with, you know, friends and people that, you know, you're, you know, like on Discord, for example, like that's almost like a kind of a metaverse in and of itself, but it's like, mm, you're yeah. going into these projects and that is sort of like an escape from reality and something where you go and you kind of enjoy it. It's like a drug almost in a weird way. Yeah. So that's like one thing that I think is amazing to watch is that like in a healthy way, you know, these communities are being built and, you know, friendships are being formed and trust is being formed. And, you know, sometimes even assistance and aid, depending on the certain situations is happening. So it's beautiful. I think like that, level of uh, humanity i think is wonderful and then the second thing is the technology and that's always what we're really uh pushing and keen to see move forward and the things that are happening for the metaverse are incredible you know for us to be able to do the things that we can do with motion capture and all of that i think is amazing but also the nft technology being adopted specifically is amazing because that technology holds so much power for brands and for you know artists and for different you know musical groups and for you know film and television studios and stations and a variety of different you know organizations that can suddenly create these really complex smart contract structures that then allow you know their communities to engage with reward structures and a whole slew of other sort of really specifically catered you know experiences to what they want and you know what they want to get back and it's safer you know it's a it's a way that they can do it where there's less sort of i guess uh scam in the long run i think personally but you know to your point the negative is super important to say that there's so many scams you got to be so careful it's just really there's no standard yet in this industry so you got to be careful because you know we're front runners here trying to figure out how to keep everybody safe yeah yeah and especially coming from a visual effects company what do you think was the easiest thing to to transfer everything over or start working on like an nft project and what do you think what was some of the most difficult things transferring into nft projects yeah, the VFX itself was the easiest thing, like the work and like the stuff that is made as an NFT. That was obviously the easiest. My company had uh, a great opportunity to work alongside my VFX company. And, you know, we were partners with the NFL and Ticketmaster for the 2021 wow. season of NFTs, wow. as well as the Super Bowl and the playoffs. And so, we're, you know, we're also having conversations for this coming year and some other things. And those are just the beginnings of what brands are talking about and doing. And, you know, like I said, my visual effects company does which is called Bonfire Visual Effects, by the way. Uh, it's a different visual effects company, but that company effectively has tons of brand relationships. And now Sombra also has these brand relationships because Sombra is sort of the Web3 and brainchild of, of this larger entity. And, you know, Sense of Shadow is you now our NFT baby. But yeah. regardless, you know, these brands are asking questions. They want to know what's going on in Web3. They want to know what's going on in NFTs. And they're saying, hey, how do we get involved? And it's an amazing thing to watch. And it only is getting more accelerated. So it's definitely coming. But like I said, there's no standard. And I think like I you know, uh, said before, it's easy to transition the work that we were doing before into this world. You know, visual effects becoming the norm in NFT world was easy. But things like marketing and finding the right development team and people was extremely difficult, almost mm-hmm. like impossible to some extent. And it really just required experience and, and time and, and energy and meeting the right people. So. That, I think, the marketing especially has been very challenging for a lot of projects because, you know, there's a lot of things to cut through um, and there's a lot of manipulation. Yeah, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. I mean, like, I, could, I couldn't imagine, like, some of the, the difficulties, especially the marketing. But as far as marketing goes and, and the work that you've pa- done in the past, what are some of the brands that you've worked with? And don't be modest here. Like, really, I want to know, like, what are sure, some of the biggest yeah. brands you've, you've been with? I mean, we... We just did a bunch of stuff for a Beyonce and like a Ivy Park, her company that works like with Adidas that does like her clothing line or whatever. Like we did the NFL NFTs, you know, we do all of PayPal's animations for, you know, their commercials and, you know, their crypto animations, which is kind of ironic. I don't know if it's ironic or coincidental. I can't always remember. I get confused when I say that. But, um, yeah, I mean, we've worked with, you know, Coca-Cola, you know, Samsung, Best Buy. Uh, we've worked with, you know, Mercedes, Audi. We've worked with wow. uh, Kia. I don't know. I mean, like, it's not. See, the thing about our company is that, like, we do mainly commercial-based work, you know. So we're doing a lot of high-end commercials. I've worked on, like, 50 Super Bowl commercials in my experience, in my career. Um Wow. So we're always meeting brands I and mean, they're fast turnarounds. So it's not like you're on a film for a year. You're doing a commercial for like a month, two months, three months, maybe. Uh, and then you're moving on to the next project. And so you're constantly getting a new, you know, sort of 
uh, experience. So, uh, for example, we did Subway, right? We, we had to do a motion capture version of Marshawn Lynch, the NFL player, where he was eating a Subway sandwich and, you know, whatever. And so he's like a video game player, and that's like directly translates into what we're doing now. And like, you, know, you can kind of see how that literally is now becoming something that is, you know, metaverse oriented and NFT oriented. And it's, it's kind of crazy, but it's really a great convergence. I think Unreal Engine, NFTs, and VFX, they're all coming together. That's awesome. And so it finally summarizes itself in phase four here of the VR television show. I don't even know what, I don't even have a classification for that in my brain. So what, what is that? Do I put on the Oculus and I watch a television or my, how does yeah, that work? Pretty much. So basically you, yeah, that's exactly right. You know, so the, we, we create a monthly television show basically with the NFT characters. So every 3d character that gets created and minted becomes a character in this universe that is also a television show. And then subsequently we'll have other versions of the show and shoot offs and all sorts of things. These shows are attached to rewards. So if you own the characters, then you're basically getting rewards for certain things that happen in the show. And also if you're voting monthly, because there's a governance, basically when you're, when you buy these characters, you own them. And as a community, there's voting rights for the plot of the show so you each month can go and vote and if you own the character you have more rights if you're just a community member you have some rights and then from there you can really heavily influence what happens in the writing process of the episode which we write in five days and then we execute that in one month now that's a regular tv show that we export from unreal engine that's fully cinematic done with motion capture you know we can show you lots of other examples and then we export it in vr so that if you want to put on your oculus and you want to be in the show and we're also working with uh, multiple sound companies that we have relationships with to do like Dolby Atmos experiences. If you're really keen to sort of like, you know, set that up and have a truly sort of immersive experience. Yeah. Uh, so you can then, you know, put the Oculus on and then walk through certain peripherals, you know, that are pre-set up based on the you know map of what we determine for the average user. Um, yeah. And then sort of be truly immersive in the episode. So if you want to watch it and kind of walk up to the characters, you can do that. If you want to like get down and see what's going on, you can do that. Like, you know, so it's sort of a different way to watch it. And I don't know if you'll be able to follow everything as closely, but you'll still be able to do it. It's cool. Yeah. You'll have to rewatch some things and, re and from different angles and stuff like that. So I know you said there's no standard right now for NFT projects, but I sincerely think that you are setting a new standard. You've got the basic NFT drop, but it's, it's an upgradable thing into to a game for like these different, you know, avatars and games where you can bet and make money. And then into a television show where you, all these little details are all coming together. Is there anything left that we haven't talked about since of shadow? Like that is, hasn't, you know, has, we haven't talked about, or what's the next best thing that we could expect from sins of shadow? No, I mean, I think we've covered it. You know, it's effectively like this cyberpunk, you know, West world of NFT madness that allows people to play to earn, to, you know, govern a television show and to own the IP rights behind really awesome characters. And we're super excited to have people get started and, you know, you know, mint these bad boys up on April 21st. And I think from there, we've got some other great conversations going with places like Rarible about some, you know, large scale NFT support. And, you know, we also have our SMBR token, which is a multi-chain uh, crypto token that lives on Binance, uh, Ethereum, as well as Polygon. And we're putting that into place for staking as well as some other great rewards and things that are going to be super high end utility for our users. So, you know, that's also some great stuff to come. And, you know, if you're interested, you can check out the roadmap. There's a lot of great content on there as well. Awesome. Awesome. Guys, if you're interested in this project or in Sombra or anything that, uh, that Brandon's talking about, check out the links down in the description below. Brandon, one last thing. What is like the number one thing that you are most excited about this project? And then we'll call, we'll call it at this, uh, for, for this interview. The most excited thing. I think I'm most excited to see our community get these NFTs and also to experience the game as a community. They've been so supportive and amazing so far. And so, you know, we're truly excited to deliver on all these promises that, you know, we've already been delivering on. And I think the community is excited to play the game. The community is excited to rip my ass apart when they play the game and tell me how <laughs> shitty certain parts of it are, which I'm sure is going to happen. And I'm excited to have it happen because I think that's part of the journey, you know, going through it together and, you know, being honest and transparent, but also sort of building something as a group uh, even if I'm the leader that has to take some of that burden, uh, hopefully I also get paid eventually. You never know. Not yet, but we'll see. Uh, <laughs> I love the idea that the community is getting to experience something fun and rewarding and that like, you know, they're building friendships and just sort of, you know, like I said, getting that escape. So that's what I'm most looking forward to. 
Awesome. Brandon, thanks so much for being with me. You heard it from Brandon already. Like his number one things are uh, the technology and the community marrying together. And I know that you could see the, his love and passion for the community uh, behind this project as well. If you want to join that community, check out the links down below. Guys, get into good projects. Lizard brain, like don't overthink things. Get into lizard brain projects and we'll see you in the next video.